Hello and welcome to my video. Now, this picture that you see now is something I painted, I think, well, actually, to be accurate, a long time ago. And um, I, I, um, I thought maybe I'll um, see if I can paint it again for you because I don't think there's a video. I did it as a demo for a couple of um, people who came here for lessons. And um, I don't know why I didn't video it. I, I do uh, forget sometimes. So um, here we are. Let's see if we can recreate it. So I'm going to get into this as fast as I can and um, be really bold. It, it doesn't matter to me actually whether it looks much like that uh, because it could end up as something else. Um, so I'm just going to sort of, you know, let's just have a, let's just play. Sometimes the... You do get the old time when it's just you know just fun to paint, and I haven't I haven't painted since uh, since my last video, and I think that's well over a week ago now, which is a bit too long. But I have been rather busy, so I'm just going to put some. Um, this is uh, royal blue, titanium white, and a little bit of Payne's grey. Some of my favourite colours. We're going to have a little bit of. Let's just have a little bit of something there for later. The thing is not to get too um, too stressed out about where and when you put your paint down, as long as you get it down. Um, I'm just going to reach over my palette and try not to impale myself on anything. Uh, I just want to get a little bit of um, bit of ultramarine blue in there. So a quick squirt of that. There's no, there's no great science behind what I'm doing here. Now I don't often go for very blue skies, so don't don't start laughing and saying, "Ah, oh, he's just putting a blue sky on there." He never do he never does that, but he's doing it. Caught him out. No, well actually he's putting it down because it's going to turn into something else. I'm just getting that as a sort of bit of a um, a base for something dark a bit later, and it will be dark. It'll go as dark as that. That's pretty dark. Um, so let's just shove some of that in there too. Now, before I go on, I just want to explain something. Uh, the reason I'm doing this so fast is because I am trying to show people how you can do stuff uh, like an imaginary landscape like this and get a good result by not trying too hard. Sometimes you can get a little bit tensed up and you try to do something and it, of course it doesn't work because you're too tensed up. So this is hopefully going to show you how to relax into a painting and just let, just let it be. Just let something, just let something turn up. So let's just get some tones. I think we'll have a little something there. I'm keeping my eye on this um, on this painting, um, looking in the viewfinder, which hopefully is uh, way over there, and I'm not going to be in the way too much. I know I go on about this, but I find it irritating when I get in the way because sometimes I like to look back at my videos because sometimes uh, sometimes I look at a painting and I think how on earth did I do that oh I can always watch the video and then I go I go to watch the video and I'm in the way and uh, it's just irritating okay so we've got some nice sort of neutral greys whites blues all kinds of stuff going on here a little let's have a little bit of something up against that dark there um, I'm going to do a bit of, bit of palette knifery. There's my palette knife, not a very big one. Um, it's it's big enough for what I want. If I really want to uh, sort of shovel on a load of paint, of course I'll use this. This is mostly used for my um, just cleaning my palette, but uh, you could use it to apply paint. Uh, so it's just as good for putting on as it is for taking off. So I'm just going to get some white. Now it will, it'll come over as sort of quite white, I think, but um, it's going to mix in with the blue, and that's exactly what I want it to do at the moment. 
because I want to build up le layers of tones in my sky rather than just try and paint all the perfect blue, let it dry, paint the white or the next tone and then gradually build up to my highlights. Uh, I, I don't really particularly... Uh, I don't want to do that. It's boring. And um, I haven't got that much time. So, uh, meaning that um, most of my videos, they seem to go for an hour. I, I, I start out painting like this. I paint a picture for you and I'm thinking to myself, right, I'm going to really do this one fast now. I'm going to just bang it out and uh, they always end up at an hour. doesn't matter what I do. I've tried speeding them up. Let's just have a little bit of white there. Okay, and then uh, a quick wipe of the knife. Pick up a bit more paint. Let's have... Um, Let's have something there. And you may start, you may ask why. Well, I have no idea. You, this, is, this is going to be as much a surprise to me as it is to you. So um, the thing is, as, as I'm always harping on about, don't take it too seriously. You'll know you'll know when you arrive at something that's that's okay and passable, or sometimes even more than passable, because it'll just look right. Putting a tiny little bit of red ochre on the the palette knife here, and I'm just going to put a few bits across there. There we don't doesn't get much more relaxed than that, does it? Right. I'm having big trouble with my microphones lately. I've got this thing strapped to my head this time. My last video, I put an apology on it because um, my shirt was rubbing against the microphone. I didn't realise it had slipped into the wrong position, and all the way through you can hear this sort of rustling sound. It sounds like I'm infested by rats, uh, but I'm not, obviously. Well, I hope I'm not anyway. And um, it was, I found it irritating. Nobody seemed to worry about it. I, maybe because I apologised, who knows? Uh, but anyway, um, it irritated the heck out of me. So now I've got this thing strapped to my head. It's a bit like wearing a, a, a woodworking clamp, not the most comfortable thing. Uh, and the microphone is um, there. If you saw that, can you see that? Sticking out to the right of my face, so I shouldn't be able to contact it. Anyway, back to the painting. Uh, so yeah, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to get you to, to realise that the more relaxed you can be, the better chance you've got of producing a painting that you might want to keep. So, what can we talk about today? What's going on on the planet? Oh no, let's not talk about that. Let's, um, let's talk about something completely different. Let's talk about how much titanium white I'm about to shovel on this painting. Um, questions I'm asked is, do I, do I use titanium white uh, tint, I think there's one called a tint, I don't know, how you can have a tint of white, I don't know, but there's one that's sort of transparent, something like, I can't remember, I never, the reason I can't remember is because I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole, uh, if you're going to use white paint, or any, frankly, any colour, uh, I don't see any point in using a, a weak version of it, when you can make your own weak version just by diluting it or, or sticking white in it, so, um, don't, don't be conned, into buying something that you don't actually want. So, let's just have that nice lump of white there. Um, questions, other questions. Yes, someone said, um, what is it you're mixing with the paint? Uh, <clears throat> now, I don't, I don't want to say check the description because that sounds sort of a bit like, oh, I don't know, it's a bit rude I suppose 
um, it, it's always going to be oil paint with me. I'm never, and I, oh, and the, ah, yes, now this is something I should say. This is, this is quite a valid point. People say, what's the best water soluble oils that you can get? Do you know, I have absolutely no idea and I have even less interest. Um, water soluble oil paint. Now I'm sure there is a chemical reason why you can have this, but I just, I'm just not interested. I like traditional oil paint and um, how they get oil and water to mix, who knows, perhaps you can tell me. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to go and buy any and test it because I just um, I just think it would be a waste of time for me because I just don't want to know. Um, I don't, I'm not a closed minded sort of person, uh, but it I just, just, I don't know. It would like it would be like someone saying to me, "Oh, have you tried those new oil-based watercolors?" I'll leave that thought lurking in the ether for a minute. So, uh, I guess you can figure out what my answer would be to that. Another another one. How much oil do I use? Um, well, it's you can't. I can't say all. That, well, not precisely anyway. The only thing I can say is that um, I use just about enough, meaning I don't want the picture dripping down the board. Oh, and this is plywood, by the way. It, it doesn't matter whether it's plywood or canvas. Uh, the amount of oil I use is just enough to make the paint mobile. I have done a few paintings where I've used a lot of oil, where it does drip all over the place, just to see what, what happens. I mean, I, I, know what, I really know what's going to happen. It's going to drip. I mean, that's not, that's not exactly um, rocket science. So, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's the amount of oil I use, just enough to make the paint mobile. Um, what sort of brushes do I use? I use cheap ones. I've got some really good expensive brushes. Um, and occasionally I will I will use them, uh, particularly if there's anything I have to do that has detail, which um, is not going to be happening um, imminently. Although, having said that, I did put a, um, a message on Facebook saying who would who would like to see how I would paint uh, a fake. In other words, how to make a fake a fake painting because i used to do i used to do paintings for a company legal fakes years and years ago and um to the point where the canvas that i used was um 17th century 16th century um usually canvas that had a a, a really bad painting on it that either was just bad or had dropped off so in other words you just had the canvas and through some kind of event climatic or otherwise the painting had dropped off the canvas sometimes you know a painting can be somewhere where it's so damp um the, the paint will just fall off so anyway I, they I, this company would give me a canvas and they would say here's a picture reproduce that and you had to reproduce it so that it um not just looked old but it had cracks in it and dents and bits dropping off and uh, scratch marks e everything that you would imagine on a, a, an ancient painting so uh, using certain techniques some which i will go into when i make the video i'll be showing you how to do that and this is this is one of my fakes uh, just coming up on the screen about now this is this is not a fake of an existing painting. This is my interpretation of a painting from a certain era. So what I did, I I looked at lots of classical paintings and I I just borrowed components from different paintings, but from uh, memorizing them because I didn't want to copy anything exactly, and then and then painting them. And then this painting, this is a very big one. Uh, this is. Um, six foot by nine and it took a year to paint no idea who owns it now it's uh, some disappeared somewhere off on the planet and that's going back a long time it's almost um, 35 40 years ago 
so uh, uh, who knows where that one went I don't know and um, anyway so the, the, those are a couple of my legal fakes and the other one I used to do often because people liked it and that is the girl with the pearl earring and in fact I'll, if I can find my uh, digital image of one that I did recently it's not finished I'll put it on the screen about now-ish so that's by Vermeer and I've done that one uh, 24 times so yes that's what I use my expensive brushes for for this sort of stuff which is nice and relaxed and free-flowing and, and a lot more fun to do uh, I use these things they're dirt cheap and now something else I want to say I mentioned in a video two and a half years ago which you may have seen it's called the illusion of detail and it's got over two and a half million views and I mentioned in the video that um, sometimes I forget to clean my brushes it's not a deliberate thing I just do a painting I get so exhausted by the time I finished that I would put my brushes down and then I would just sort of forget them and they would be ruined now it's not I don't intentionally throw them away or anything like that or, or let them go to waste it's just uh, it's just down to um, you know energy level I just so tired and uh, so people have been telling me off now for two years two and a half years on clean your brushes duh, duh, terrible awful behavior it's not awful behavior it's just forgetfulness so um, there we go so these will be cleaned when I finished I want something dark there I think now what I've just done there, you see, that could be the horizon. Now, do I want to keep it as the horizon or not? Questions, questions. I'm going to, I'm going to have that as cloud. So I'm going to put in a few bars of cloud across there. It sounds like music, doesn't it? A few bars of cloud. Let's have another one here too. Right. So okay. So that's that's the sky up to that this point. Next thing I'm going to do is um, using this thing or maybe this one which is the best one I've got two here um, I think this one I'm just going to smooth the sky a bit and just take off some of the some of the bumps and lumps and blur it down And as usual, the um, I just wipe off the residue from the brush, and I'm using mostly the side of the brush, not the metal, obviously, just the bristles, just a touch, just to take off brush marks, and then every every few swipes, just give it a wipe. So this is stage one of my sky. All different directions. It will make all kinds of marks on your painting. But eventually they sort of blend out. There is a bit of a knack to this bit. So if you do it and, you, and it doesn't work first time, uh, don't give up. It's worth persevering because you will end up with quite a nice uh, sky very quickly as well I'm not interested in the mo at the in the moment I'm not interested at the moment of having any high contrast bits in the sky I'm after the um if you think of this as the first stage, I'm after the uh, the tones and the values in the sky that are slightly subdued because I'll be adding more white contrast uh, later on, either during this painting or um, when it's dried off a bit. Now, let's turn it into a bit of a landscape down below there. So for the landscape, it's always the usual suspects. 
it's um, sap green and red ochre which makes this I find quite interesting color so let's have some land here a bit of a hill I think there coming down so I'm working into the sky and there's a very good reason for that because the colors will mix together and you'll get your perspective effect have a little bit of a let's have a panorama across there. I do like my panoramas. Come up a little bit into the sky. See at this stage, whatever I'm doing is is must not be confused with um final. This is not the final painting. This is this is planning and plotting and um figuring out what's gonna work figuring out what to leave out, what not to leave out, all, all that sort of stuff. Um, and it's sort of, it's very hit and miss sometimes. I think, I think there is a, there is a sort of, uh, the more you do it, the more you uh, subconsciously come up with solutions in your head. So for instance, over here, I think we should have, um, something dark compositionally it just will look good there i think how's that for planning a painting i'm putting something in because i think it'll look good which is actually you know to be absolutely blunt that's what painting is is about it's it's making it's how do i explain this one um you don't want to paint a picture that people are going to look at and then immediately uh, walk away from. You want you want to you want to capture the the person's attention. So you're going to paint something that catches the eye, and that's what I'm after. Now, whether it's because of interest in the landscape, lots and lots of little uh, nuances in there that um, that create a bit of excitement for the eye. Uh, or um, some kind of focal point. I'm not probably not making this awfully clear. I'll do my best. So let's have let's take away some colour there because it just needs a little bit of a contrast. I think. Now I'm not. I'm not worried with this um, landscape too much because I'm after a, a, an effect of perspective I'm not I'm not trying to paint something like buildings and I don't know farms and animals and all that sort of stuff because I'm just not interested in that I'm, I'm just interested in shapes and um, shape and color I suppose that's all it is so let's see have some greens. Hope you can see a difference between the the colours. Just have a quick look in the camera, see what that's up to. Oh, that's okay. Right. So um, let's have a little bit of colour up there. I was thinking of making a video with um, just music um, and me painting and I suggested it on one of my videos I think and the general consensus was no don't do that tell us what you're doing so um, I guess I won't do that then I'll tell you what I'm doing well what I'm doing is um, I'm waiting for something in the marks that I make that captures my imagination you see this is like a lot of my paintings it's close to somewhere I've been 
the picture I showed you at the beginning, uh, I'll show you again. Uh, this one, I'll get out of the way so you can see that one there. You see, that's that's somewhere in England. Um, and I I went there years ago and I saw it and I clocked it in my head, committed it to memory. And, um, and of course, now I can't remember where it is, but it's in England. Hope that helps. Right. So let's have some more green down here. And I think I want bold, simple, dark shapes there. But also I want some light in it. strong light on the ground there so this is almost like um it's like abstract abstract landscape i suppose you could call it i mean it's tonalism it's not quite impressionism it's more on to on the on the tonalism spectrum but um it's almost abstract in some ways because um nothing in there is actually real Let's have a shape that way, I think. Let's have something across there. So it's like um, what I'm trying to do is sort of guide people over here. I'm trying to do things like that, that line there, just because I don't want everything going that way. I want a little bit of something to break it occasionally. These light spots here, here and here, I like that. And the light on the hill, that's good. Got to figure out what I'm going to do over here. Um, but it's all, you know, I don't know. Do I even know? I think I know. Sometimes I know, and sometimes I don't know. And I'm having one of those days today when I'm not quite sure about anything, but I'll, I'll persevere anyway. <laughs> so um, down here, let's have some green. And let's see what the brush does. Now that's quite interesting. You have to admit, these shapes here are interesting. What are they? You see, it's just it's holding the brush like this, doing that. So it's obviously the corner of the brush just catching. Now maybe, maybe they're worth developing. I might just leave them. I'll leave them for now anyway. Bit of solid colour down the bottom there. Who knows? Who knows what they are? I don't know. Um, and I think over here, I'm going to have to get. A little bit of a little bit of contrast in there, so I'm going to put in a light shape. You probably realise by now this is not exactly like the picture I showed you at the beginning. This is just, it's just I suppose the only <laughs> I've done it now, haven't I? The only thing they've got in common is that they're both sort of landscapes, I suppose. Let's have a little break there and a break here. So what I'm after, you see, this is a very quick way. With that light bar that I put in, and then these dark shapes over the top. It's an extremely fast way of painting a field and putting trees in front of it, rather than painting the trees and then filling in the field behind. You know, w w it's it's so much faster and cleaner this way. That's uh, it's coming along. Okay, so you know, uh, just for your entertainment. <laughs> I sometimes I start a video like this and I think and I've only had one that I failed on this that's a reasonable record I start painting and I think is this going to be any good or is this going to be the one where I'm just going to scrub it and obviously not put the video up but uh, and luckily out of I think oh, what's it, eight, 90, 90 videos I don't know something like that um, it doesn't happen much that it's happened once before and that's it so uh, the record is um, is okay. Have another tree there and another one here. I think yeah, let's definitely have one there. I needed that one. That's a good tree. It's not necessarily a happy little tree, but it's a it's a tree. So there we are. There's a tree bang in the middle, slightly off to the right. Um, so yeah, something always uh, something always pops up. No major disasters yet. Let's have some 
trees over there, I think. In fact, I know. And up here, I think, what should we do? Let's let's try and make that a bit more a bit more monumental at the top there, a little bit higher. That's there we go. There. Now that's a very contented mountain that. Right. Okay, so uh, every now and then when I say so and I wander off, you can hear, probably hear me walking about. It's because I'm coming over to the camera and I'm just having a look in the viewfinder to see what you can see because I'm seeing the painting and uh, I'd like, I like to, s uh, it's, a, it's fascinating this actually, I think. Um, quite a lot of artists use reduction mirrors it's a little glass thing, you hold it up, look at the painting, and it sends you back 20 feet. It, so you get a small version of what you're looking at. And it's quicker than walking back 20 feet. So I use I use um, the viewfinder on the camera so that I can see the small version of it. And uh, it's actually quite a um, quite useful little trick. Now down here I'm putting in some sort of shrubbery bush type stuff with some with some red in it. Uh, when I say red, I mean red ochre. Let me make sure I'm out of the way here. Quick sideways shuffle. Okay, let me just go back to the camera there. Yeah, the thing that you notice, uh, or will notice, as you're driving around, if you're in the countryside or there's anywhere like this, I tend to see it all the time now. You'll, you'll go past a field, and you uh, people who don't paint, you see, they'll... S oh. Let's start again, Stewie. Um, people tend to think of a landscape as green fields, green trees. They don't see the variations in the greens. And uh, if you look at a field, you know, on on, f on farmland, it's very rarely, unless it's something nasty that they've genetic genetically modified, uh, the grass in the field will be different tones of green and all kinds of variations going on in there, different colours and what have you. Um, so you don't want to paint a field that is just flat green. You will send your viewer into some kind of coma because it just, there'll be something about it. Everyone, people will look at your painting and I say, it's too green, you know, and they're spot on. It is, it can be too green. Green has to have reds in it and browns, otherwise it just doesn't work. Okay, so here I'm putting in a few textures and then wiping and then putting in texture and wiping so to build up uh, multiple layers of stuff. Stuff going on. Stuff in the painting that when people look at the painting they will say, wow, that's really intricate there. How did you do that? And that's how you did it. Like that. Okay. I think that um, it, when you paint, you see brushes are obviously very important, but paper, paper, anything you can use that will produce an interesting texture. Like I've got this old brush here. I often, often uh, dig this one up just to show people. Uh, this is an extremely tatty beaten up old brush it's um it's like the last chicken in the supermarket you know the one nobody wants so but because it's because it's all scraggly you can get some wonderful textures from it so let me just demonstrate one here um and in fact i'm going to possibly i'm going to try and zoom in so I'll cut here, and I'll come back to you in a second. Right, so we've zoomed in a little bit, and um, using this scraggly thing here. So, right, so I, all I did here um, was just to touch the board uh, and just make some light scratchy marks in it. Um, and as you can see, it starts to build up texture. 
In fact, we could we could just put a load up here. Let's just do it. Let's just be brave. Okay, so there's something growing there that's got nice spindly bits on it. Now, what is it? Well, what it is is a clump of something growing. Uh, and your brain by now has figured out that it must be some kind of bush. What else could it be? Let's have a little bit of light there next to it. I think we need that. So that, that's how my mind works. It's a, I'm continually looking for areas in a painting where I can get the maximum effect of contrast. Because without contrast, um, a painting can look really quite flat. Now, I'm going to keep this one. I don't know how long this has gone on, but um, I'm going to try and keep it quite short. <laughs> Here we go again. I always say this, don't I? Maybe I'll just settle down and just let it take its time. If it's an hour, it's an hour. My own, the reason I, I, I mean, I don't mind making long videos. The, the thing that's irritating is the amount of time it takes to upload it. Uh, the last video, which is only, um, I think it's one hour and one or two minutes, it took 12 hours to upload. And uh, I always prefer to switch my computer off at night rather than leaving it on, uploading something. But anyway. Okay. Right, so I'll zoom back out again so you can see what's see what's going on. Now, looking at the picture, I can see a few bits that I'm not overly happy with. And that is over here, that area. There's not enough going on there. And um, I think it just needs something, needs something doing to it. I think it needs some light coming down there. Just a touch. The thing is not to go mad, you see. I could have gone, oh, let's have light, 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 oh, more light, light, da, da, da. right, okay. That would have that would have gone too far. Whereas if you just go far enough and you, you have to train yourself when to stop, um, it gives you a chance to uh, keep the interesting bits. You see, just a touch and you get interesting bits. Now this has turned into a blob. Now I can um, de-blobify that purely by putting a few shapes here next to this dark area below it to give it a bit of form and then possibly something at the bottom there like so. That contains this, it frames it in that shape there and I'll do a little bit more on that just to um, just to exaggerate it a bit so that it becomes obvious to you. Okay, after a lot of fiddling with my camera, I think we're in the right right area now. So um, I'm going to get some dark gr sap green. Not much red in this. It's just mostly, and it's on this corner of the brush. This just this corner here. So uh, let's see what we can do. I think we'll strengthen the contrast down there just a little bit. And I think uh, a little bit more texture up the side of the hill here. And this, because this is dark, uh, this green that I'm adding here, um, it'll, it, it's not very dark. It's just dark enough to have a contrast between that, where I'm pointing with a handle, that and what's next to it. Just enough. So down here, that could turn into a wood on the side of the hill. There. So um, why not? Let's have a let's have a little statement down here. Let's have a. Something taller poking up into that shape. You 
so you don't need a small brush to paint uh, the, the effect or illusion of detail. You can use a big brush and just use it carefully because you know if you just use a corner of this massive seven centimeter brush uh, you're just using a little brush on the edge aren't you okay so we've got just a shape up there and we've got all these textures in here we've got one ac nice accidental one there looks like a bit of a field coming up and up, up and then around here this light patch I could take it off the edge of the picture but I'm not going to I'm going to uh, just make sure you can actually see it can you see it I think you can just I'm just going to put something over the edge of it like so now this this sort of painting is um, something that can be worked on later it's prime uh, real estate for glazing which is one of my favorite pastimes with painting that is to get a painting like this to a certain level let it dry and then afterwards you can go over it with other colors and always keep what you've put on here in other words when the glazing goes on you can then wipe off if you make a mistake or you can wipe off to get a lighter effect uh, I do have glazing videos um, so if you look through if you rummage through my channel you'll find them and uh, that explains it but I'm also going to be coming back to this painting uh, very shortly as soon as it's dry and I'll show you how to actually put a glaze on it so let's back the camera up a bit right so we've got a we've got a reasonable feeling of perspective um, which is mostly because of the the colors here blending into the colors there although it's not quite right it's just not exactly what I want so I'm going to do a little bit more on making this look more distant here um, and I think I think I'm going to put in a few a few little touches. This is this thing I find totally fascinating: is that you can you can do something like that. Do I need to zoom in again? I think I will, but I'm not going to adjust the up and down; just in slightly there. Let's see now, this this stuff here it's just touches. It's just literally things like that, just little touches on the on the board, on the paint. So I'm working in wet paint here, and they will the, these touches will give the feeling that there is something um, actually happening. So let's have a little something there and another something and then pull some of the light paint down into the wet paint like so so now I have uh, I've just added a bit of green uh, there's plenty of brown on the picture so I'm not going to add too much more brown now but what I am going to do is just continue to put in little shapes that are obviously going to register to the viewer as uh, trees and all they are really are just blobs painting is all about blobs and putting your blobs in the right place so there's a, a sort of little flurry of detail that is not detail I'm going to put a little bit more in in fact I'm going to bring this one here out and when I say bring it out I mean just make it darker yep I think that's gonna do so what else I mean when I when I come back to the painting I'll be working on the sky and I will um, obviously get much more contrast and also try and get more um more drama in there I, I might have a go before i finish today i'm not sure but i'm beginning to think that possibly this video has gone on almost long enough let's have a little something there just to just because 
There's no other reason, just because it might work. So when you when you paint, if you're a beginner, always keep this in mind. If I do something that is risky, what's 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 going to happen? Supposing I get it wrong. Well, supposing you get it right. There's a very good chance you might get it right. And of course, the more you paint, uh, the more chance you will have of getting it right. I'm going to zoom back a little bit more. Just to make sure you can see what I'm doing. I do forget sometimes. So we're going to have a few little, let's have some so some dark shapes here that are reminiscent of something. In other words, I'm just trying to hint to the viewer that whatever's going to be down here in the foreground there, I mean, it's not going to be dolphins, is it? It's going to be green stuff. It's going to be trees and bushes. So um, there we are. That's That's how you get this sort of illusion. Anyway. Now then, I want, I have to say, on my YouTube channel, I do get mostly, I think 99.9% .9 of the time, I get good, interesting, positive comments. Now, um, due to the numbers, I can't answer everything, um, because I just don't have the time. Um, and I was listening to um, a YouTuber the other day, nothing to do with uh, painting. It's just that, uh, in fact, it was to do with um, uh, camping and hiking, which is something I'd really quite like to do. Anyway, he gets a lot of comments, and he said that he, I'll answer comments for the first two days after I put a video up. He says, but beyond that, I just can't do it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have time to make new videos. So I thought, well, OK, maybe I should adopt that attitude so that if you've got a question, get it in in the first two days after I upload it. Anything after that, I'll acknowledge you. And if there's a question that really I feel I have to answer, then I will. But I, I just can't answer all of them. And uh, don't be offended. It's nothing personal. It's just um, it's just a time factor. So um, and generally, yeah, the comments are really nice. I do get the odd the odd nasty one, but I have I've set filters on the channel so that um, it picks up certain words. I mean, there's no point saying, "Oh, I really like your channel. I've subscribed. Please subscribe to mine." I won't. I'll only subscribe to your channel if I like what you're doing. Uh, not I will not subscribe just because you've subscribed to mine. Um, so don't ask. Um, don't send me links. Um, links are banned because I get some uh, and they're just weird some of them are just too weird I'm not even going to go into where these links take you but some I won't click on some I'll click on because it looks harmless and then regret it but some are obviously not harmless and um, so yeah don't send me a link it won't ever get opened and um, I have a bit more light on that hill there Just a touch. Okay, so I think that's probably it for this video. So um, yeah, now before I go, all the usual rough rubbish. Um, I do online Zoom classes. If you go to my website and the link is below, you can contact me. Uh, well, you can actually go. Two reasons. Okay, two reasons to go there. One, you can contact me. The second is that if you want to book up for a Zoom class, you'll find a contact page there, um, or a referral page, uh, and that will tell you where to go and book. And um, the lessons, uh, it's an hour painting, half an hour talking, although it never works out that way. I think my record at the moment is talking for three hours, so um, I think you get your money's worth. Um, if you're a Patron. I have a Patreon page. If you are a patron, you get uh, quite a, a good um, reduction in the cost of the lessons. 
and I think I want something there, just there. Uh, what else? What else? Something. I'm sure there was something else. Uh, yeah. Oh, very important. Subscribe if you like what you see and hear. Please subscribe. It's um, it makes a big difference because obviously the number of the more subscribers you have, the more chance I have of meeting you and teaching you if you want and um, uh, there we go yeah so there's a little bell icon next to the uh, I'm, I'm dithering a bit here because I'm just having a final look at the picture before I wrap it up so that um, I get you get to see the maximum of what I'm going to do with it today uh, a bit more like there so um, yeah there's a bell icon next to the subscribe button if you click on that then you'll be hounded forever by me popping up telling you that I have a new video so I uh, hope you won't feel too hounded nice bit of light catching the ground there I like that okay okay so that's it for today and I'll um, do the, the glazing on this as soon as I can and I'll upload a new video and uh, thanks for being here take care and I'll see you again bye for now <laughs>